Today we're having a look at Ableton limiter and how to use it. Let's jump into Ableton. So what is a limiter? Basically, it's kind of a compressor with an infinite ratio. What it does to your audio signal, it's catching the loudest peak and then bringing them under a certain threshold or setting that you're setting. Now, initially it was to not exceed a certain level, like, but as you might know, now it's used also to gain loudness and sometimes even add a bit more punch. First thing we're gonna have a look is the ceiling. Basically, it's the maximum level your limiter will output. And usually the limiter is at the end of the chain so that's the output that's going to be converted from digital to analog through your sound card or converters now you could put zero but a common practice is to put minus 0.1 or minus 0.3 db just as a safety so that when you are converting from digital to analog you are not clipping now once you set that you're gonna have your signal entering your limiter and you can select how much input gain you want so you're gonna have to start to crank up this until you get some gain reduction <laughs> Alright, you can see you gain reduction here. You have how much is being reduced. Now, two other things that this meter will show you is how fast the release is and also if your channel are treated equally or independently. It's just a nice visual feedback to help you visualize and understand a bit more what is happening. Now, you have the release knob, which is basically how long it takes to the device to stop replying limiting after the signal fall below the ceilings. Now, fast release makes the sound louder and punchier where longer release will add smoothness but also reduce the dynamic range now one tip i can give you is that with the release you really have to hear not only how louder you can get or how compressed the sound is but also how it affects the groove and like the movement of your track like with a compressor you could have like a pumping effect of no depending of the release here's the same you really need to pay attention how this groove and movement is affected by the release <laughs> Like you could hear around 200 it was a little bit like not dull but kind of slow where with a faster release you get a more energetic limiting. Now release can be set in auto as well which means that it will adjust depending of the input signal. Now that being said one important thing with the release as well is also depend of your look ahead. So let me move back to around 16 milliseconds. So basically the look ahead is the amount of time that the limiter anticipate the audio signal before to actually process it. Basically you will have your limiter and you have your peak coming and if you have a long look ahead the limiter got more time to see these peaks coming and can apply a more gentle compression where you have a very short look ahead like your limiter kind of see the peak at the last moment and so what it's gonna do it's a very fast compression. So what does that mean this in terms of sound? Well basically shorter look ahead like around 1.5 mean a more aggressive compression which means a sound more squashed and compressed. Where a longer look ahead like 6 mean a less aggressive compression. Now one thing I really recommend is really to experiment with the release look ahead and even the input gain all together to see how each affect the sound and I actually made a little experiment here. So here I have three limiter. The first one is with a short release and a short look ahead but I had to reduce the input gain because when you have shorter release you, you usually have a distortion so I had to reduce the input gain. Now the second one it's with a short look ahead but obviously a bit longer release than usual compared to this one where you have a longer look ahead but a very short release. So let's hear how each sounds. <laughs> So which one did you prefer? If I'm being honest, I'm gonna cancel this one because I feel like there is a difference in loudness, but between these two, I found them very similar sonically. Yeah, do you hear any difference? Let me know in the comment. So that's why I really recommend to experiment because you can get very similar results with different release and look ahead. And this obviously will change with track. Each track is different, but yeah, that's to really encourage you to really experiment now we have the standard mode that's the one i will use most of the time you have a sub clipping which is gonna obviously add a bit of color and warm i tend to use it less or sometimes i like to use it if i use two limiter one after the other finally we have the tropic mode which is like a more accurate way of limiting it's usually to be sure like you are not clipping once you convert from digital to analog from 
what I see, some people use it, some people doesn't. Again, just do an A-B test. Again, to my ears with this one, not a huge difference. So I usually stay with the standard. Now, the thing with TruePick is I feel like streaming platform and other recommendation recommend to on your master have nothing above zero, like zero dB TruePick. But if you check master from any of probably your favorite artists, and if you check the TruePick, they will probably have like positive TruePick, like one or two dB. So yeah, that's why I'm not caring that much. And I now most of the time stay in standard. Now, finally, you have link and routing. Basically, the routing you will have either left right or mid side and you can with the link select if you want you left and right signal to be treated like the same way or if you want to be treated independently so you you can just check the view meters and you're gonna understand <laughs> You can see at 100 they both have the same gain reduction where at zero each channel have its own gain reduction depending on how much gain reduction it will apply on each channel. MS is a really interesting one because I feel you get a better stereo image with you're gonna hear <laughs> I don't know, I feel like in MS mode and the link around 50% depends on the track this obviously, but you get a better stereo image where with LR you have something a bit more like focus, let's say. So again, this is depend what you're looking for and the track. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is the legacy smoothing. If you right click on your device, make sure that the legacy smoothing is not ticked because if it's ticked, it means it's like the old limiter and they kind of improve with a smoother release. This works better for longer release so that may be interesting to a b if you have longer release i've done some tests to be honest and i don't really hear the difference maybe i'm doing something wrong all right now one thing i haven't talked about is the maximize button which basically transform your limiter into a maximizer maximizer work a little bit different basically you will have your signal and you slow down your threshold so for example let's say if you are at minus six now all the peaks which are above this minus six gonna be reduced to be sure everything is under minus six db and then the maximizer what it's gonna do it's gonna kind of normalize your signal which means it's gonna then bring it back from minus six to zero <laughs> This is kind of really, really squashing everything. And again, depends. Maybe you want to just use it in a gentle way, just a little bit, or maybe you want to just squash everything. Then obviously you're going to lose in dynamic and you might result in a, not a louder sound, but feeling also pretty steady. Now a little bit something off topic, but I wanted to talk about just to remember you that you have also in Ableton Live, if you download the pack called Creative Extension, you have this color limiter, which I usually don't use it for limiting, but you have a saturation with color here, which is really nice to add a bit of warm to your sound. <laughs> Very nice, I will usually put it before. All right, and that's it for today, guys. Hope you like this video. Hope you learn a few things. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.